It's time for the wrap-up of the July TTRPG Book Club. So, you may ask, who is this guy? Uh, and I'll answer, I'm Paul. I've been here a while, but I just don't talk much. It's fine. <laughs> I decided to read a number of things from the Free RPG 3 bundle from Exalted Funeral, which sadly ended midnight July 19th, so no one else is going to be able to do this. Or if you already did it, good, you got in there, you did it. Um, but I read a number of those things, and I'm going to read off some of my favorites, or the ones that I read. If it's not in this video, either I didn't read it or I didn't like it. So, uh, creators, don't think about that too hard. First up is Babel by David Blandy. Babel. Babel is a solo game of language and reality in which you need a journal, a writing implement, a recording device, a six-sided die, pack of cards, letter tiles, and a block tower. I know that's a lot of things, but it's worth it. What you're gonna do is the game goes through phases where you roll your dice, you see how many cards you pull, the cards each have a special event that you go through with your character, uh, wherein you can manage resources. I haven't read all of the things that you can do with the cards, but you just gotta, like, trust me on this one. Eventually, you find out your true name in which the game ends, or you pull blocks from the tower, put them on top, like that uh, licensed game that I don't know if I can talk about, uh, and then if it falls down, you die. It's good. <laughs> it's a cool way to represent the final moments of the mythical Tower of Babel uh, and the strange nature of what must have happened then. It's a bit disjointed. Uh, anything can happen at any moment. And uh, the idea of journaling about it and really, it, it says here you gotta like, close your eyes and really absorb what's happened. Uh, and I really, I really do think that's good, taking that to heart and writing those things down. Try it out, Babel. After that is another journaling game that I read called Failure and Mutiny. This one's by uh, Thomas Drinnen. And instead of the Tower of Babel, Babel, hmm, this one is all about space. Everything as previously listed, except for no letter tiles. Knock that one off the list. But this time you're managing resources and your crew as you are going around space trying to make enough money to survive. So if you want to explore that in a little bit of a, an obfuscated way, play this game. Check it out. Uh, it also has addendum rules, so does Babel. If you don't want to have a block tower, a little thing is included for both of these games. Check it out. If that sounds like a good time to you, if you want to do some RPG nonsense on your own time and really delve into uh, these settings and uh, just get a bunch of journaling prompts, that, I mean, this is, it's a, a very loose choose your own adventure in a way. Or not. I don't know. I haven't played it yet, but I wanna. Let's dip away from journaling games and go to 5e expansions. I know what you're thinking. 5e, really? The most popular game in the market? What could you possibly add? Aliens. Strangeness. What happened at Wyvern Rock? Uh, by Drew Meager. This is, uh, I want to say, my favorite thing that I found for 5e. Bar none. Uh, it is filled with... <laughs> Woodcarved stamps, and it is 20,000 words of bringing strangeness to high fantasy. What is strangeness? How do I communicate non-magical things in this game where everyone's going to think I'm going to be talking about magic? Well, you came to the right place there, friendo. It's got minor encounters to major encounters, a whole section on uh, encounters of the third kind. 
Now I say this is a 5e supplement because most of the terminology is in dra dragon game terminology, but if you have a knowledge, a general knowledge of d20 systems, this could be really system agnostic. Uh, I personally want to take all of this and funnel my heart and soul into a Monster of the Week campaign where people are just dealing with strange. And this has given me so, so much to work with. Uh, check it out. There are three adventures in here. Three. Not just one. Not a sample. Three with different structures. And again, these pictures are just phenomenal. Next, I want to talk about two sets of Troika spheres. The first two are written by uh, Josh Demonsky. First one is A Jungle Safari of Rescue and Ruin. This one is a film crew following around Sir Montesquieu Fortitude uh, on another daring adventure. And your players tag along and go through the jungle and so f fulfill a quest. Uh, and it's all fine and dandy. My favorite like little fold in this is that uh, Sir Montesquieu Fortitude is on an adventure across the humpbacked sky to catalog the wonderful weird creatures and civilization. Um, but it's got open, open casting calls. While all adventurers will play a key role in this daring episode, the studio is not shy about replacing their actors at the drop of a hat. If so desired, players may take on the role of Sir Montesquieu Fortitude or the Rebel Queen Coco. Um, if your characters love bits, uh, if they love roleplay, this just f sounds like a blast of everyone getting the mean chart and rolling something up and throwing in their best jokes. Uh, after that, after A Jungle Safari of Rescue and Ruin is in service to a sultan where your players are escorts to a minor sultan who is a, uh, an heir of little note with seven older brothers. The sultan wants to ride a sandworm and be the one known as Sandworm Rider. That's a bad idea, but <laughs> boy, would that be fun to assist. Josh Demonsky, good job. These adventures really feel like the world is the straight man, that there are, are there is setting, there is complications or like little encounters along the way. The overall objective is dumb and, I, and, and perfect in that matter. Troika campaigns are little kids trying to get the basketball off the top of the roof. It's gonna, it's all gonna be futile in the end, and uh, it's nothing, nothing good is accomplished in a Troika campaign. My only issue with these is that they are uh, acid death fantasy hacks, or uh, supplements, and I don't have that, so I need to do a little bit of research to figure out these enemies that are in the book and not in the pamphlets. It's so close to running one of these. I just gotta give the Melsonian Arts Council a little more money. Whoops. We also got Earth Jumpers by Alex T of Black Oath Games. Earth Jumpers are Earth Jumpers. The players immerse themselves in days of the shattered Earth. Earth has gone under this cataclysmic uh, bad of time where you are now an earth jumper uh, using altern alternomium to jump between different realities, different uh, splits of time and fragmented uh, <laughs> historical fiction fun uh, on this planet earth. Building onto that is Super Earth, also written by Alex T of uh, Black Earth Games, where you are playing superheroes in another shattered Earth, <laughs> Earth number 34351G. Uh, this one's really fun in that it has all of the roles to create um, supervillains, 
you got missions, you got arcs, complications, assistance. It's it's everything you would need for a serialized or uh, uh, your Saturday morning cartoon if you want to like do a series of one-offs with the same characters over and over again. I'm a big fan. Uh, you did good, Alex T. I want to talk about other games. First off is Castaway Survival RPG. Uh, anyone who knows me in real would know that I am... I, uh, I, I love wilderness survival. Um, and this scratches all of those itches. It is a tabletop RPG where rarely is the enemy uh, your fellow man. Rather, the PCs are going against nature in general. Be it climate, be the uh, the creatures around you, snakes and such. Uh, and also it, it gets a little philosophical. You got this cool background creation that leans to people having real world problems that may or may not come up in moments of distress. Uh, also mechanically you have your, uh, your die that is your effectiveness and also your health in a way that starts at a d12 and ticks down d12, d10, d8 uh, until you uh, are overcome by different conditions and die. Mechanically, thematically, this is everything I've always wanted for. I, I mean, I guess I've wanted to make a system like this, and it's good to know that it's already done. I don't have to do that. Uh, this is Castaway, written by Joe O'Brien and Riley Kyoti. Castaway is an independent production of the Afterthought Committee. Next up is Hot Circle RPG by Casper Duderek. This might be one of the better character creation things I've uh, read when it comes to tabletop stuff. Uh, giving characters very clear uh, creation. They have beliefs, instincts, traits that all boil down into simple sentences. Beliefs being, I believe, stance, so I must goal. And uh, I, I mean, honestly, uh, in what I've played, it seems to be that, like, yeah, here's your thing. This is your belief. Believe it. Uh, where this seems to be a more holistic, kind of analog approach to creating, uh, creating characters. Uh, the game then functions as a very much a story game where interactions are the prompt for rolling uh and it, it feels like when you get to a certain point you then roll a task uh, you roll uh obstacle tests to then retcon your backstory it's like i know this person okay roll for it do you know this person yes you know them but they're your enemy oh okay um you roll to remember things in the past that you may or may not have done or skills that you may or may not have learned. Uh, and as you go along, uh, you're, you're, you're gaining persona and fate points, which you can use to re-roll and take the second roll. Uh, and those are also tied to your advancement. Uh, it's a cool game, a very story heavy, not as focused on combat. Um, but at the same time, I think I'm gonna read it again uh, Casper, I love this game. I think it's very cool. Um, my reading comprehension is piss poor. So, I like it. I like it, but I'm going to need to spend some more time with it before I actually know how to play. So then we get to the lesser key to the Celestial Legion by Don Shroud and James A. Posnell Jr., have you ever wanted to add weird religious elements to your game? Yes. Have you wanted to add strange heralds of the gods who appear dramatically to guide and boss your PCs around? Yes. Not only have I asked to do that, but my players have asked me to include that in the game. And this is exactly that. 
This is built for the Dungeon Crawl, Dungeon Crawl Classics system, which I know nothing about. But there are so, so many roll tables here with flavor and ideas that I would recommend it to anyone who wants to put some old god shit in their game. And not only is it like the heralds of these old gods and uh, appearances and things like that, weird signs of divinity, it's also boons, it's observance of religions, it is uh, relics, reliquaries, and saints, a cleric's mission, including a section on uh, advancement for clerics based on the size of their congregation and maintaining the ministry. It's, it's a big ol' hoot. Goblinville Issue 1 by Michael Dunn O'Connor. This game uh, frankly kind of terrified me because uh, I saw these little things of goblins. I was like, ah, okay. It's a little 30 page zine. You got a couple of goblins. Okay, it's like a funnel thing where everyone has two hit points. That's fine. Um, so you get you get there, you open this thing up, it says welcome to Goblinville, and you set up for your first session, you make your characters. Great. Okay. Oh, oh, okay. So these goblins can have sorcery and spells. Uh okay, that's a lot for kind of a funnel thing. Oh, there's overland travel. That seems like a, a longer structure. Uh, oh, you have a uh, grim favor, death advancement, uh, based on titles. That's a fun idea. Oh, it really sounds like this is long form. We're on page 11. Uh, oh, hey, oh, 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 city creation. Oh, we're going to make entire cities based off of character creation, uh, and equipment by availability, locations, Oh my god, uh, so there's actual big cities. A uh, section on running the game with monster creation and balancing encounters and an adventure. All in 30 pages. Like, color me impressed. This is so, so much. There's a couple of times I'll, I'll start like reading a little zine or a pamphlet or something, and I immediately know that I want to run it. This is one of them. Uh, hook, line, and sinker. Done. Last of the systems is Metal Queens of Skull Mountain Ride the Lightning Edition. Mwah. Hi, I'm Paul, and my favorite band of all time is Heart. And this game was made for me. You are riding around with your metal queens, doing cool shit, casting cool spells. I mean, the, I, I started reading this this thing, and immediately in my head was... This is uh, the Morkborg that I always wanted. It's a 5d20 system, so if you're a, uh, a dice goblin like me, I'm upset that people have already made the games that I've always wanted to make. Um, and also, just glad that I don't have to do the thing. I'm also upset that there is a recommended sounds thing at the end of the zine that has uh, no mention of heart, specifically Little Queen. Uh, but you know what? No one's perfect. No one's perfect. Poor little dreamer stands inside the door. Or he could be. I think that's all I have to say. Um, that's all the games that I read and wanted to talk about. Again, unfortunately, this free RPG thing is over, and you cannot get it again. Even if you ask really nicely, I don't think it's going to happen. But you can definitely sign up for the newsletter at Exalted Funeral. And if you want more free stuff, check out Free RPG Day. That's going to happen this year. Get that free stuff. And until the next book club, I love you all. Goodbye.